Good morning and welcome to this service of virtual worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. Our church board, the session, and our deacons and our entire church family, we all welcome you uh, to this time of worship. 
Although we are separated spatially by this pandemic, we are together spiritually. The Bible promises us that where two or more are gathered, that God is in our midst. So, by grace, through the Holy Spirit, in Christ, by the power of God, we indeed are one. You are part of that great cloud of witnesses. And I imagine that there might be some new faces on the other side of the screen. Uh, I look forward to meeting you as circumstances permit. Um, let us now come before the Lord in worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 138 and is based on several of its verses. Let us worship God. We give thanks to God with our whole heart. We give thanks for God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Though high above all things, God sees the lowly. Even when we are in deep trouble, God makes us live again. The love of God lasts forever. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. Hear now our call to confession, which comes from Psalm 124, verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth, confident in God's ever-gracious, never-failing help. Let us come before the Lord, confessing our sin and seeking forgiveness. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have conformed our lives to the ways of the world and not the ways of your kingdom. We think highly of ourselves while regarding others as lowly. We exalt possessions and power when you alone are to be exalted. We let conflicts prevail over grace and divisions over harmony. Have mercy upon us, we pray. 
forgive and transform us that we may be holy and acceptable to you, discerning your will and following in your way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now continue our time of confession in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, we would now be lost in sin. But it is the Lord who is on our side. And so we are forgiven. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, tell us the truth we need to hear. Show us the way we need to follow and grant us the life we need to live. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the first part of verse 11 and verses 14 and 15. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. God has made everything suitable for its time. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken away from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beginnings and endings. Our life is full of beginnings and endings. The first big ending in my life that I can recall was the first day of junior high school. All my friends had gone to school that I had gone to school with for six years. We all rode the bus together from our little country elementary school into town and to the big junior high building. Arriving, we were ushered to the gym where we sat huddled in our little group of friends. As other buses arrived from other rural elementary schools and from town schools, each group huddled with their friends that we were all separated in our groups. The principal warmly welcomed us and he concluded by announcing our homeroom assignments. As he read our names alphabetically, each group would get up and leave with their assigned homeroom teacher. Well, as he began with the A's and the B's and the C's, as someone whose last name begins with V, I was soon the last person left from my group. I was all alone. I was assigned to a homeroom where I didn't know anyone. My old world was ending and a new world was beginning. I'm still in touch with a few of my elementary school friends, of a very few. Most of them, though, I was never that close to again. Our tight group and our close bond dissolved. That time was over, and a new time was beginning, one in which I made new friends. Then that time ended, and another time began. And then that time ended, and yet another time began, over and over and over, again and again and again. Our lives consist of chapters, places, times, which all pass so quickly and are seemingly gone forever. But the Bible tells us that that is just not so. Ecclesiastes tells us that yes, for everything there is a time and a season, which rightly describes the transitory nature of this world. But Ecclesiastes also tells us 
about God and about those things which endure forever. What God does, says Ecclesiastes, endures forever. Nothing can diminish it. God shapes time and us. And what we do with God shapes time and us and others forever. Recently, Sam and I went on vacation out west and we were enjoying the Slick Rock Canyons of southeastern Utah when it hit. A torrential downpour, a rain so hard that the wipers couldn't keep up. In minutes, the rain stopped, but the water wasn't done. Off the tops of these red mesas came all these chocolate waterfalls. The rain couldn't go down into the rock, so it went sideways over the rock, pouring off every cliff face, scouring canyon walls with gravel, sagebrush, even small trees. It hit me what a force this was. This seemingly weakest of elements, water, had shaped and was shaping everything that was around me. Puny, soft, malleable water was able over time to master rock. Miraculously, water with time carved and created the Grand Canyon. That desert downpour taught me a whole lot about God and about how God works. Most of us don't think about God that much, and when we do, we don't think God is that powerful. The ways of God are compassion, forgiveness, holiness, and the power of love. The ways of the world are indifference, vengeance, haughtiness, and the love of power, which always seems to take the day. But God and God's ways take the ages, carrying all of time and us towards God's own good ends. Like water, God and God's ways have their way. They patiently, persistently shape us and our world into a new creation in which all of the seasons of our lives, all the turbulence of our time, and the weight of all the ages are transformed by grace unto beauty, justice, and peace. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, shall gather up all of our beginnings and all of our endings, all that is, all that has already been, and all that shall be, Jesus will gather all of creation up into his arms and into his gracious reign, which we can join. Since God is love, every loving thing that you do with God lasts forever, incorporated into the work of grace and the shape of heaven. God adds your loving acts to the flow of the kingdom of God, which levels mountains, cutting through rock-hard obstacles like prejudice, pettiness, and hate to bring about beauty and grace, which we can trust God to bring to completion. In God, nothing is lost, not one thing, not one soul, not any former time of blessing. Those all live on in God's heart, as do we. We are held in love, just as all creation and all time is held in love. As our seasons come and go, as we rejoice and grieve, we can trust that God's love will carry us forward, drying our tears and helping us discover fresh grace to live. 
As the saying goes, just when the caterpillar thought its life was over, it became a butterfly. The same thing is true for you and will happen to you. Love will carry the day. You will be resurrected. Nothing shall be lost. Life, not death, shall reign. By grace, through Christ, God will do this. Therefore, let us all stand in thanksgiving, awe, and love before him. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, in a dangerous world, we thank you for your shepherding care. Continue to gather and keep us in your love during this pandemic. We pray for the whole church that we may be strengthened in devotion to your word and in service to all who are least, last, and lost. Make us eager to do your will and walk in your ways of compassion, generosity, and peace. We pray for the people of the world, for all nations and all in positions of authority. We pray especially for our President Donald, our Governor Eric, and our Mayor Todd, that during this time of trial they may lead us wisely and well. We pray for the sick and those in distress, for their families and all who are combating the coronavirus and other maladies, that your healing may abound, restoring us all to the fullness of health, life, and joy. We pray for all in medical and healing professions, EMTs, nursing home aides, and all essential workers, that you would protect and bless them as they serve to bless us all. We pray for all who grieve, for all who are distressed in mind and spirit, for business owners with financial worries, for all who work who are concerned about covering their bills, for students who study and teachers whose work is made more difficult, for the elderly who are isolated, for the needy whose plight is worsened by this pandemic, for the agencies whose mission it is to help and whose funds are strained, for our families and ourselves as we endure this time, for Alan, Alger, Betty, Dick, Jim and his family, Judy, Linda, Lloyd, Marty, Roger, and for these persons and concerns that we now name silently before you. O oh God, we thank you for receiving the prayers we have offered. By the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all one in Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, In the Bulb There Is a Flower, is sung by Jenny Fight Swick.
Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge us all to remember that in God, nothing is lost. That all of our times, good and bad, all of our days, past, present, and future, are in God's good hands. God will bring us into a new day and will save us all through the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's live that faith and share that love and abound in that eternal hope. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.